In regard to databases, and particularly in regard to development and uh, uh, programming of such systems, um, there is an important uh, area to consider in terms of security, and particularly in terms of integrity and availability, and that is transaction processing. Now, um, tran the transactions uh, of uh, entering uh, databases, very often a database is part of a system that multiple users may uh, all be using together. And they, they may um, be accessing, and they probably are accessing, uh, similar uh, inventories to make orders. Um, well, let's take the case of um, airlines. And uh, uh, either uh, your travel agent or increasingly you yourself um, uh, using a computer or even an app on a phone um, can buy a ticket uh, on a flight um, and book your, uh, your seat on that flight, uh, make various specifications, what kind of meal you want, that sort of thing. Um, the thing is, that flight has a certain number of seats. And each seat is only one seat. You know, you cannot put two people in the same seat. So when different people are booking seats on the same flight, uh, they may be looking at the same seat. Uh, those who have traveled know there uh, are ways to sort of game the system, and, and there are certain seats that are pre preferred. Uh, and... Uh, so, you know, different people are, are going to be, you know, competing for the same seats. Well, you can't, you know, book the same seat for multiple people. Um, so you have to show what seats are available, what the, the inventory of the seating is on the aircraft. Uh, but the first one to, to book the seat gets it, unless there's an auction situation. And then I don't know. It, anyways, it... The thing is, you've got multiple parties going after the same entity. The entity has to be shown as available when it's available until it has been assigned. Once it has been assigned, then, you know, and, until it is uh, freed, released, uh, somebody uh, changes their mind about which seat or, or whether or not they're going to fly on this flight. Uh, but until that seat is released, it cannot be assigned to another passenger. So, um, you know, we, we have to have this kind of protection. Multiple people have to be able to uh, see the record in the database, but uh, there has to be protection uh, in terms of uh, multiple entities trying to actually modify that record by, for example, booking it. So, um, we've got that situation uh, going on, and, and we have to have uh, protections to deal with this. Um, we also have, I mean, a, a transaction is, uh, it's got to be seen as a single entity, but very often, it involves multiple functions. Again, for example, uh, you have uh, an online retailer. Um, you have uh, various inventory. Um, people are looking at the inventories, uh, same as, as the airline seating diagram. You know, what's, what's in stock, what can be shipped, uh, what it costs, all those types of things. Um, when somebody buys it, it's not, you know, we're not talking about multiple people buying the same thing. You know, again, there are those kind of protections. You can only sell as many uh, uh, items as you have in inventory or, you know, other things about how quickly you can, 
uh, fulfill uh, an order. But anyways, you have uh, uh, a number of entries in a number of tables. If we're talking about a relational database, which we'll get into. Uh, but you have to uh, change the entry in the inventory table. Uh, you know, we have to reduce the available number of that item by one. Um, we have to uh, generate uh, an entry in accounts receivable. Somebody owes us money now. We have to uh, uh, generate uh, an invoice uh, somehow. Somebody is, is going to be billed. Um, we have to... Um, make an entry in the general ledger because we have now made money. We have increased the value of the company, uh, the business, whatever. Um, so we have multiple functions, multiple entries in multiple tables that are all part of this single order. And so we have a, a situation where we need to do a, a bunch of things and until all of those things are done, we have uh, uh, not completed the order yet. And so we will have a situation um, using, for example, two-phase commit, where we will start the processing, but there will be a, a flag indicating this has not yet completed. And, and we're probably uh, making entries as we go as to what parts of this transaction have been completed. And uh, we, we talk about in uh, transaction processing um, the ACID test. And uh, this is um, atomicity, um, the, uh, the transaction is atomic. All the different parts of it, yes, it's got different parts, but they must be considered as a single entity and it is not complete until all the parts are complete. Um, there is uh, consistency. Um, we, you know, again, in terms of the integrity of the information, making sure that we are consistent about how we deal with the transactions. Um, there is uh, of uh, isolation that until the transaction is complete, we don't show people information about parts of the transaction. We have to, we have to isolate um, that, uh, you know, a, a number of aspects of the transaction until everything is done. And durability. Um, and, you know, once a transaction is made, it's made, it's solid, it is, you know, it, everything is written out um, and ready, uh, uh, able to be read by anybody else querying the system. Um, this uh, issue of durability is, is very interesting. Um, when number one grandson was very young, uh, number one grandson is by now uh, the father of my first uh, great-grandchild, but anyway, um, uh, when he was very young, his mother took him to a store, he was running around the store, uh, ran behind the counter and encountered their computer which ran their point of sale system and uh, as um, uh, was the computer at grandpa's house there was just a big red button on the front which he decided to press um, now he decided to press it because he wasn't able to press it at grandpa's house because grandpa had very unfairly uh, invented the uh, patented grandson guard which was just simply taping a business card over the button uh, the store hadn't done this. And so he pushed the button, and of course the computer turned off. Uh, I didn't... Uh, you know, I, I wouldn't have thought that this was possible, but apparently turning the computer off lost them their entire morning's sales because they had not written out the transactions. Somehow the transactions were simply stored in memory and, and weren't written out uh, to disk. And, you know, so we may think that durability is, is sort of an automatic thing. And, and we may think that transaction process is handled by our database management systems. 
we have to make sure that that is true. We have to uh, understand how they do uh, meet the acid test and, and how they uh, properly deal with uh, two-phase commit and, and situations like that. So make sure that your database engine does do what your needs for transaction processing require.